So this question comes from Christopher W. I am 25 years old and I'm concerned about my future in IT. I served five years in the Marine Corps as an IT guy doing more or less basic help desk troubleshooting. I am now a contractor working for the DOD doing the same help desk type of things, but now I have CompTIA Security Plus and nothing else. Specifically, I administer Active Directory, Exchange 2010, Windows 7, and even XP workstations. I work in an open storage environment. For those that don't know, it's where you don't have to secure classified materials when you leave for the day and wireless devices are not allowed. As you can tell by now, I'm a little behind the, the power curve due to my working environment. I believe this is going to significantly affect me if I try to get a job in the private sector. Yes. Uh, could you tell me what you did in order to transition from the government side to the civilian side of IT? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, that, that, that's a story unto itself. We'll tell a little bit about it here. Um, so this is a big problem that, that a lot of people run into in the IT profession. And the best quote I heard was actually from a, uh, a Cisco person who was talking about people that say they have 10 years experience. And what he said is a lot of people actually have one year of experience that they repeated 10 times. And this is something I am telling you guys, you should be scared of if you're a professional, an IT professional. And it's one of the reasons I smack you guys in the nose so much about you've gotta go out there and you've gotta get ahead in your career. Help desk is, far, help desk is completely honorable for one year. It's completely normal for two years. It is adequate for three. If you are still in a help desk environment on the four year mark, basically your career is going absolutely nowhere. And even if you do go out uh, for a job interview past that, people are going to start to question why the hell you spent that long on help desk. Again, you spent a year on help desk, nobody's gonna think twice about it. You spend two years on help desk, Okay, well, yeah, whatever. You spend three years literally on the help desk, people are going to be like, hmm, I'm really not sure about this person. And then once you go to four, five, six, or seven, because again, remember in the IT world, so much of our profession is about self-discipline, about self-motivation. I want, I am going to get ahead in this career because I am interested in new things. You know what I'm saying? So if you, if you stay at the help desk, it makes employers question exactly how motivated you are because anybody that can stay on the help desk for four or five years and not lose their mind, you got to question whether or not they're really going to be cut out for the administrative side, especially when things get more stressful and there's more money and all that kind of stuff on the line. So it's good that this guy is asking this question because basically he is in a dead end position. No matter how much he's getting paid, no matter what the raises are, at some point th this, this position is going to go away and he's not really setting himself up for anything else. And so the problem is, is also in, is, is in his particular environment, it doesn't sound like there is any way, a good way for career progression because that's really what you want to do. When you get into a company, what you what you want to hope for is you've got about four years of career pro progression. You can go from help desk after about a year or so, you go to what's called desktop support. So help desk is where you sit in the little call center for the company. Then you go to desktop support. Desktop support is one step above help desk. Those are the people that actually run out to the individual computers. Um, you go, oh, you know, I heard your computer crash. Let me come and take a look at it. Then past that, you go to the junior administrator administration level. That's when you start dealing with some of the servers and all that. Then you go to the, 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 the middle, the normal administration level. Then you go to senior administration level, and then you go for the management. So really, when you normally take a job, what, you, what you're really hoping for, no matter who you work for, is that you can go up a few steps. You would like to be able to go from help desk to desktop support to junior administration. That should be your goal. So even if you come in low, you should want to get to junior administration before you leave the company. And the reason for that is that means you're at one company, so it's easier to progress up the ranks, right? Again, it's easier to get hired uh, by people who actually know you. If you walk into the desktop support department and you say, hey, I work at the help desk, I just want to make sure my name is, is in uh, if there are any job openings, then, the, then the, the hiring manager for the desktop support department is going to look at you and go, oh, okay, I, know, I already know the company trusts you. I can go and talk to your manager. So that's a lot easier transition, the same way up to junior admin. And these, these are jobs that, that have a lot of churn to them, so it should be pretty easy to, to work your way up. It may take a couple of years, a few years, but you can work your way up. Then once you get to the junior admin position, uh, the reality is, is once you get above junior admin, you get into the, the professional world where people don't like to churn so much that basically people get 
into these jobs and they stick around for a while. So once you're at the junior admin level, then you can put your resume out to other companies. When you go to those other companies, the other companies can, the, the, employee, the employment managers, the human resources people, can look at your resume and they can go, okay, 2014 he did help desk, 2015 he did desktop support, 2016 he went into a junior level admin, it's now 2018, and there's no jobs, there, there's no open positions at his company, and so he's looking to progress. That, that makes a lot of sense. So th that's what basically uh, you're looking for normally when you go for these companies. So this person is not not in any, either of those that, that situation. Basically, he's in his job, the job is dead end, doesn't sound like there, there's a lot of pr internal promotion advancement. So the question is, what does, does he do? At that point, it really comes down to a lot of what do you think you're, what do you, what do you really think your opportunities are in the world and what resources are, are available to you currently? Uh, again, you know, I keep hammering on this nowadays and this is one of those things where I have changed my mind about over the years, but I actually think college degrees are a good thing. Now, I used to poo-poo college degrees. I used to really poo-poo college degrees, but the more I talk with you guys, the, the more of these questions I get, the more I have to say, I think college, at least a bachelor's degree level education uh, is a really good idea for a lot of you folks and especially if you're coming out of the Marine Corps. If you're coming out of the Marines, you should have college benefits. Um, and if you're already working for the DOD, I'm not sure how the contracting working goes, but they should have college uh, reimbursement there too. So what I would argue is probably more or less stay with the job you have since you already know it uh, and then go to college and basically do college at night and try to bust through a bachelor's degree over the next few years. I think the bachelor's degree is going to do you the best in the long haul. And especially if you've got all of those benefits behind you, it's not a bad thing. Um, if you're 25 years old, depends on what kind of 25 year old you are, you know, are, are you foot loose in France fancy free and you don't have any responsibilities or do you have a wife and kid? Um, if you don't have a wife and kid, again, I don't know what your particular set of college benefits were, but I know some people uh, coming out of the military with a stupid amount of money in college. I mean, they get a lot of money, right? And so one of the things you could also think about is just quit your current job, focus completely on college. Again, bust through college, get all the experience and everything you can while you're going through college, and then come back to the real world. That also makes sense to people. I did the Marine Corps, I was a DOD contractor, I went to college, and now I'm coming to, to try to work for you. That is something that intellectually makes sense. And and so that's something you might think about. One of the reasons I would offer you that idea is if you do a little bargain hunting for what, what college you go to, again, I don't know what your particular military benefits were. I know what mine were. And what was really nice with my educational benefits after I came out of the Army is they simply gave you a check every month. It was awesome, right? Why this is important is the Army did not care whether I went to Harvard or whether I went to a community college, I got the same amount of money every month. So for me, again, I, I am very budget-minded, I took the money that the, 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 the Army gave me, went to low-cost schools, and so that helped pay not just for the school, but also for rent and all those other kinds of things. So if you go to a local state school, you can bring in enough money to pay your entire way through college and pay most of those living expenses. And why that's important is because, again, how we get ahead in our field is by doing experiments, by playing around with testing out new things. And so if you can go to college, have the college paid for, plus have living expenses, then you can go out there and you can try to work for a startup company. Or you can go out there and try to work on weird projects that aren't necessarily going to pay you any money now, but would be very valuable for you going into the future. You know, you might go, you might help out with a Docker deployment. So Docker is the, the, the big new technology. You may go to a company, they don't really want to spend any money to, to have somebody deploy Docker, but they might be interested in it. So you could come to them and say, listen, I'm willing to work for almost nothing as long as I get the experience of doing this Docker employment. So that's one of the nice things is if you go to a lot of these universities, they have these internship programs and you may only get paid nine bucks an hour, which sucks, but but you get a lot of good experience. And so if you're already getting paid from the military to go to college 
and you're getting this experience, four years from now, you could come out being very impressive. So that would be some of my thoughts with this. That would be some of my thoughts. But yeah, you definitely do want to get ahead and you want to get out. You can go for the, the Microsoft, the, the MCSE track, the MCSA, MCSE. I, I would argue go to basically go straight for the MCSE if you're going to do the certification track. But I'm a little concerned for you. Um, You've just spent so long at help desk. You've just spent so long at help desk. Um, I'm worried how the certification track would actually do for you. Truly, I have nothing against you. Not like, not like bad you. But there's just something about that. There's just, there's just something just vaguely like having been an employer. Like when I see that, it's just like just something vaguely concerning. I would be a little concerned just sitting you out for the certification track. I'm not actually sure how well it would go at the end of the day. Because uh, again, you have to realize in our profession, I mean, we all, we're all different. We, we all go about things in a different way, right? And so there are people that can go for the certification tracks and excel at them and do very well. And there's other people that simply can't. <laughs> I would argue college for you, especially you got those military benefits behind you. You got the Marine Corps, you got all that. I, I would say go, I would say go to a local university college, take all the military benefits that somebody is giving you, um, and then go from there. And then work, like I say, work on as many weird experimental projects and all that as possible. And I think in four years, you will come out in a very, 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 very good position. Again, I know when you're 25, um, it seems like you're old. I'm old at 25. Let me tell you, now being 38, uh, you're only 25 once, right? <laughs> It's like there's a lot of people that, you know, they don't want to do college. They're like, Eli, I, I, I already have this job. I don't want to do college. I don't want to do any of that because I, I want to build who I am. I want to build my resume or whatever. And so a lot of times they don't realize how young they are. You know, 25, you're still young. So if you're 25, you get the college degree by 29, you come out into your 30s looking really good. You look really, really, you're an ex-Marine, you have experience, you have a college degree, you've been doing all this wacky stuff. You roll into your 30s looking really good. Just, mm, you looking good, right? Uh, versus if you stay in your DOD job, which may be paying you a decent amount of money now, but it's, it's that A plus help desk crap position. Maybe you go out the MCSE, I can just see you in another four or five years still not being much anything. You know what I'm saying? It seems like the DOD, it seems like staying at the job or whatever would be the safest bet. But I would, I would argue you'd probably be worse off at the end of the day. So that'd be my thought. Go, go look at the, uh, and remember when you go to college, um, computer science degrees and IT or IS, information technology, information uh, systems degrees are different things. So for you, I would probably argue for an information technology degree um, and go from there. As far as my personal experience transitioning from the military to the civilian computer world, um, <laughs> again, like, like most things in my life, <laughs> We got a six pack of beer in about four hours. We can, we can go through that conversation. Uh, the biggest thing for me, to be honest with you, and again, this is one of those things you have to realize uh, is very relevant, is it was, it was simply a period of time. It was during the, the dot-com boom. The, dot, the dot-com boom uh, was what got me into civilian IT literally as much as, as anything. If the, if the, if the civilian dot com boom hadn't happened, um, I my life would be a lot more interesting in a lot of other ways. But I would not have gone into IT serious, like like truly. And this is one thing you have to realize about the world and how your life goes and how other people's lives goes. It is your your life is controlled as much by the circumstances of history as anything else. And so for me, it really was. It, it was the dot, things were going on during the dot com boom. Um, I got specific uh, offers, options because of the dot com boom, and that led my life in a specific direction. But that's but that was very, very particular to, to my life circumstance. So that is, and that, but that, why I bring that up is that's an important thing to realize whenever you're, you're talking to anybody is that you can't replicate other people's success. 
uh, we all have gotten to where we've gotten uh, through our own weird ass twisty twisty roads and so you have to be very careful about going up to mentors or going up to people you respect and saying how did you get to where you are because the reality is is whatever information they give you is 10 or 15 or 20 years old I can tell you how I can tell you how I got started on the path to get me to where I am but that literally started in 1996 right? So the story that I would tell you would be a very interesting story. There may be some very enlightening components of the story, but it would not be relevant to today's modern world. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it's, t my story is tied to its place in history. We are in a fundamentally different world than we were way back when, and there you go. So I hope that helps for you. Yeah, go for the degree. Go, go to college have fun, get a degree, get lots of experience, and I think that would be your best bet.